the last few weeks I've lost a friend and his name was Larry Watts and when I was between churches and I was kind of struggling I was able to meet him and I went and worked in his church for a few years and uh, Larry passed on through the portal into the to the to heaven and uh, he meant so much to me I learned so much out of him in the three years that I served under him and uh, but one thing it kind of brings to mind he had a wife her name was B and she, she was a very learned person and just very strong in the word but she made a comment that you read Ephesians a day and you'll keep the devil away. So I want us to start today on Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Ephesians 1, verse chapter 3. It says, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings, in heavenly places in Christ. Now, when we look at this, and I want to break this down a little bit, and the Lord kind of spoke to me on this, is the first part, it says, blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we kind of think, why do we need to bless God? I mean, he is the author of all blessings. He's the one that creates blessings. He's the one that blesses us. But how do we bless God? How do we bless God? Well, when I look at it, and I've been thinking about it, that to bless God, we need to start to praise him for who he is. Thank him for who he is. We need to just lift up his name and Father, just show him total reverence and praise his mighty name. And so when we look at it, to bless God is through our praise, through our praise. Just praise him for what he's done to our life. Praise him that he is our father and he is our God, that he's the creator of all things. He's the creator of the universe. He's, 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 he has made us and chose us to be made in the image of Christ. We need just to thank him for what he has done for us. But then also when we think about blessing him, we need to have adoration that we just so much adore him, that we adore him wholeheartedly with all, all of our heart, all of our mind and all of our soul. So we need to look at this and say, thank you to God. Thank you, God, that you are who you are. You are our father. Oh, you give us our power, that you give us, that you're all omnipotent, you know, Father, that you're all knowing, omniscient, Father, that you are everything and that you're always present for there, that we adore you for this, we praise you for this. So we have also have to remember, we need to thank him, that thank you, God, for being the author of all blessings, and that not only the author of blessings, that you give blessings and that you're giving us blessings to be a blessing to other people. So we want to thank you. Now we go on to the little bit further in that verse. It says, blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Now we have to realize what we're talking about. We could talk about temporal blessings, the blessings that we get here on earth, and we need to thank him because he does provide us ways to to create he provides ways and he supplies all of our needs according to his riches but he's also telling us that in heavenly places that he is giving us blessings in heavenly places well when we think about the blessings that he gives us you know he gives us the love and he gives us the patience and he gives us all the fruits of the spirit but we have to understand that in heavenly places, that it says in, later in Ephesians, it says that we are raised up 
to sit in heavenly places next to him. And when we're talking about him, we're talking about Jesus, that he is sitting next to him to be our advocate, that he is standing, sitting right next to God, and then we're sitting next to him. And so he is our advocate to bring the blessings, when we say in Jesus' name, blessings from God to us. So we have to understand that all blessings come from him. Now, I want to look at the next verse. You see Ephesians 1, 4. Ephesians 1, 4, it says, According as he has chosen us in him before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love. Well, first of all, I want us to look at this verse. It says, according, according. Now, when we look at it, according, the word is said, according to what? What is he talking about, according to what? Well, he is talking about the according to his divine plan that he has chosen us before the foundation of the earth. He had a plan to have family. He had a plan to have a relationship with us. But because men, he gave them a free will and they fell, you know, with Adam and Eve and sin was brought into the world. But he still had that plan that we would have reconciliation back to him. That even though we rejected him in our sin nature, we rejected him. He still had that plan to have us to have a relationship with him. And so according to his chosenness, that was what he did. He chose us in the beginning. He chose us in the beginning that we would have a way to become part of his family. That was his divine plan to be, have a family, someone he could have relationship with. Just like Adam and Eve, he had the relationship and they walked in the garden and they heard his voice and he was the God of all comfort, but sin took it away. But in his will, in his will, because of his love, he sent Jesus Christ to die on that cross to be the ultimate sacrifice for our sins, the past, present, and future sins that they would be covered by the blood that he sacrificed on the cross and then he was raised the third day to, that he overcome the, the grave, sin, in the grave. And he just overcome it to, so we can be reconciled to be back to according to the plan to have when we accept Jesus as our Savior that we will be able get back in the plan of God to have the relationship with he has. Now we see in that verse that it says that we should be holy and without blame before him. See, when God looks at us, when we accept Jesus as our, Christ, as our Savior, and that he comes to us and he washes away all of our sins, and that he gives us the opportunity to serve him. So, God's eyes is seeing us as blameless, that he sees us as holy. He sees us that we're separated for him. And we see this, that he sees us differently, differently. And that was according to his plan, that we are brought back to in the fold of the family. Well, in Colossians 1.22, it says, Yet Christ has reconciled you, that's me and you, to God in his physical body through death in order to present you before the Father holy and blameless and above reproach. So we're looking at this, that it was, goes back again, that according to God's plan to us to be family, that he has reconciled us because we needed reconciliation because the sin and the sin nature in our life. But he gave Jesus as an ultimate sacrifice, his only begotten son, that, you know, he gave it to us. That, you know, God didn't want anybody to perish, but he gives us the opportunity to choose him life or choose total separation from him. So when Jesus gave his body through his death, but then through his resurrection, 
which was the power that he gives us the power that that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead that he reconciles us back to that power back to that comfort that we can walk with him that we can hear his voice they do his voice to the word hear his voice to the Holy Spirit and we hear his voice so he God sees us as blameless and he gives us the opportunity that we're no longer bound by sin but it is a choice that we make but if we make the wrong choices, that he's faithful and just. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our unrighteousness. So he's done all this in the status of love. He loved to have a relationship with us. And that's what he's looking for right now to all people to have a relationship with him. And he wants to love us, love us. And we, again, we love him wholeheartedly. We have that admiration. We learn to praise him. Well, when we look again in Ephesians 1 5, Ephesians 1 5, the very next verse, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Now, let's look at that again. Is that, well, some people say, well, only certain people are predestined to come to God. No, he said that. He said, none shall perish. But he made the opportunity that we were given a choice to accept him as Lord or Savior or not. So we're looking at this and we see that, again, that it's part of his plan, according to his plan. That his plan was that all men should come to him. But because of our free will, not all men will choose him. So we have to understand, but he brought it through Jesus Christ, that we will, that we will become his children through adoption, that he adopted us, even though we were in bondage of sin. But when we confess him as our Lord and Savior, confess him and ask for forgiveness of their sins, that we are able to to become back into his family. That was like as an adoption, that then we become adopted into his, to, in his family. And so, but again, it says, again, in that verse, according to his good pleasure of his will. Uh, again, that's that according. We go back to that word according, that he, this was the plan. This was a plan that he had, that all people will be reconciled to him, his plan. But he took that plan and he used Jesus, Jesus, that that all plan, according to his plan, that we will benefit, that we will inherit. See, when you're adopted, you get to inherit whatever, who your father and mother has, and you inherit, has inheritance. But when he adopted us, he gave us the inheritance of his kingdom, of his kingdom, that we will have eternal life through Christ Jesus. And we see this, that he, for his good pleasure, for his good pleasure. And the good pleasure that he has is that he wants to show his infinite love to us, the love without any bounds, love that shows mercy and grace and so forth like this. Now we look at Ephesians 1 6. Look at Ephesians 1 6 and it reads To praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. And we see here again, we see that that through the adoption we become his sons and daughters. But through this that we get grace. And it's by grace that we are found. It's not by our works. It's that we don't boast that. And so he says that we give praise and glory to him because he accepted it. Because it's a free gift. It's unmerited favor that he extended towards us that free gift that was stored up to us. That was that eternal life that he has for us. That life here on earth to live abundantly. And so when we, when we give in to him, 
and seek his kingdom and his righteousness, then all things will be added to us abundantly. And so he gives that to us. So we look at this, and but it's all through grace. It's a free gift. It's a free gift. We do not have to be paid for our sins because Jesus paid it all. He redeemed us at the cross. Now, if you do not accept Jesus, you're going to pay for the sins because sins has, sin has consequences. Even if you're saved, you have consequences if you sin. But the thing is, we come to Jesus and confess him and he's faithful and just and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. So we look at this, that he accepts us as his beloved. He accepts us as we are. A lot of people think they should change. And, well, I can't come to God until I change. No, we come to him and he sends the Holy Spirit not to condemn us, but to convict us and to be able that he makes the changes in us and we choose the choices that we make. So he extended that grace to us. He extended it his, as a free gift. He extended his hand towards us so that when his hand is not shortened and all we have to do is receive it. And when we receive it, he comes into us and makes his temple in us and he lives in us and then that graciousness that he puts in us will go out so we can be gracious to others. So we look at this. He extended his grace through his son, through his son for us. So we look at this. I want to look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. It says, For by grace... You are saved through faith, not of yourselves. The gift of God, not works that any man should boast. This just, this reiterates that, that plan that he has for us, that grace was part of his plan, plan, that we will just come to him and receive the free gift that Jesus paid for that gift. And so we look at this, and so we see that it's, through our faith, through our faith, and by grace we save. It's nothing that we can do because it's already done on the cross and it was overcome on the resurrection where we have the power. So we see that in Ephesians 1.7, Ephesians 1.7 it says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin, Again, according to the riches of his grace. Wow, think about that. He redeemed us. He paid the price for us. The redemption over the sin through the blood of Jesus. And we see this through that redemption that we receive forgiveness of our sins, past, present, and future. That, but also he gives us wisdom. He gives us the access to his wisdom and his knowledge. We see that what is wisdom in the first place? It is the knowledge that we have that has been given to us and wisdom is how we use it. You, we can have all the knowledge in the world, but if we do not use it wisely, it doesn't do us any good. So wisdom is is knowledge being used and put to practical applications. Well, it's said here that that we were redeemed. We were redeemed. And what was, why were we redeemed? Well, he marked us and sealed us with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit guaranteeing us our inheritance in heaven. Guaranteeing us our inheritance in heaven, otherwise to have eternal life. So we go back to the first part of this and go through each part a little bit, is that blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, that what are we supposed to do? We need to praise him. We need to praise him. Let everything that has breath praise him. 
as long as we can. When you're going through something, and I found this in my life, when I'm going through a turmoil in life or those things that it says, momentary afflictions, which I like to call pauses of life. And the pauses of life, I praise him because I know that I trust him that he will get me through this. I trust him and I praise him, not because what I'm going through, but where the victory is going to be won through the grace that he has. So we look at this, that we go through and we praise him, but then we adore him. When you adore something, you just don't half-heartedly, you wholeheartedly, you give your whole mind, body, and soul that when you totally adore somebody. So we see this, that he gives us. But we also have to remember this all goes according to his plan. His plan is that we all become his sons and daughters. And the way we do is that through the blood of Jesus, through the believing that Jesus is our Savior, confess him as our Lord and Savior. And so we see this, that he tells us that we are his. And through Christ Jesus, that we have eternal life. And all these things will fall into place for us. All these things. Let us pray. Father God, we come to you in the name of Jesus. And first of all, we praise you for all the things that you've done for us. That you had a divine plan for us. That we should not perish but have eternal life. And because sin has entered into our lives, but you've given away through the blood of Jesus and through his resurrection, that if we just confess you. And Father, let our lips confess you in everything we have. Father, let us look to you in all things. Father, we thank you for the, the blessings that you have stored up for us, both temporal and spiritual blessings. That peace that you give us, that peace that overcomes all of our understanding, the joy and the mercy. And Father, we just thank you for those, those heavenly blessings that you give us. But thank you, for Lord, that you even bless us temporary to be able to realize that you are in control, that all we need to do is submit ourselves to you. Father, again, we just thank you so much that you are our Father. You're the creator of the universe and that you are molding us in the image of Jesus Christ to be pure and holy and without blame. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I would like to ask, not that just to lift me up or anything, but if you see this on any of the media things, just push like and, and subscribe because this helps the message to go out the world. It has nothing to do with me, but I just want the word of God to go strongly out to the world. I'm in a small place. I just, it's a type of thing, but I'm actually in a major place because God has brought us out. So I'm just saying, push the subscribe so it could go out to many people and that, that more people will be reconciling reconciled to God, that they will receive those heavenly blessings that he's put on us, that, that they will see that grace, that free gifts that he gives, that he extends towards us, that's stored up for us and he extends it towards us and his hands not shortened, and that he will be able to give us grace in us to do a work in us so we can be gracious to others. So we let our light shine and be the ambassadors that we should be and bring others to Christ Jesus. And thank you, in Jesus' name, amen.